Okay, everybody. I hope that you all did fantastic on your tests and <clears throat> that everything is going well. Uh, today we are jumping into lesson 66, which I think is really wonderful following a test because it's kind of a gimme lesson. It's, I think, uh, quite simple. Basic addition and subtraction. <clears throat> But rather than adding and subtracting over an equal sign, we are going to add and subtract using inequalities. And we're going to notice that the process uh, for moving terms from one side of the inequality to the other are the same as they are when we're moving terms across an equal sign. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So we're going to recall that we can add and subtract the same number from both sides of an equation and it will remain a true statement. That same principle is true for inequalities. The addition property of inequalities states that when the same number is added to both sides of an inequality, the statement remains true. So let's begin with our first problem here <coughs> as we are going to see together. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some colored pencils here, guys, as I draw my number lines. Uh, feel free to use a colored pencil if you wish. You don't have to. Uh, a regular pencil will work just as well, but if you desire, then go grab a colored pencil um, or two, and we will work on moving these terms across the inequality and then graphing them, not on a coordinate plane, but on a number line. As we look at letter A, x minus 8 is greater than negative 4. What we're going to see is that this addition property of inequality tells us that as long as we move the same number to both sides of the inequality, that that statement will remain true. Now that'll help us be able to graph more clearly this particular inequality because x minus 8 is greater than negative 4 would be quite difficult for us to visualize on a number line. However, if I move this 8, which is a constant, the same type of term here as I have with negative 4, from this side of the inequality to this side, as long as I do it on both sides, then I maintain the same value, <clears throat> this becomes a zero, on each side of the inequality, negative 4 plus 8 is 4, and I have the same truth value in each statement. So now when I draw my number line, it's quite easy. Okay, and I think I'll go ahead. Uh, let's see, x is going to be greater than 4. I'll go ahead and start with 0 here. 1, 2, 3, this will be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm just going to make that 10. And I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab a green. And we're going to remember that when we have a greater than or less than sign that does not include an equal, we use an open dot right here on the 4. And my statement tells me that x is greater than 4, which means it's going to include all of the values that are higher, more than 4. So that's what my number line graph will look like. Easy enough. <clears throat> Let's do the same thing for letter B. x minus 1 half is greater than 3. As long as I add 1 half to both sides, then the truth value of the statement <coughs> remains. So here, this goes away, and I have x is greater than 3 plus 1 half is 3 and a half. And I can go ahead, draw a number line. Here's a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, here's a negative 1, positive 1, 3, there's 5. And I'm going to, I don't have an equal sign here, right? Just a greater than doesn't include an equal, so that means it's going to be an open circle, and it's going to be at three and a half, which is right in between. Oh, my pencil broke. <clears throat> I'll use an orange instead. Right in between three and four. Open circle, and x is any value that is greater than three and a half. So my graph looks like that. For number two, we're going to solve these inequalities. We'll graph and then we will check our solution, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> here, x minus 2 is less than or equal to 3. I'm going to move this 2 so I can get x by itself over here to this side. As long as I do it to both sides, then the truth value remains, 
and I get x is less than or equal to 3 plus 2, which is 5. Okay, and I will create a number line. 0, 1, 2, 3. Oh, I should have done that differently. 5. Uh, and guys, I'm going to move my 0. Okay, I'm going to put it uh, right there. 1, this is negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's negative 5, 6, okay, that's going to be 1. There's 3, just give myself a few points uh, to look at there. Now, x is going to be less than or equal to 5. Oh, goodness sake, I guess I should have just left that alone, shouldn't I? I need a couple more ticks here on this side. Just like that, 4, 5, there's a 5. All right. There's a seven. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use my blue pencil this time. And when I set that dot, okay, my point here on my number line, I'm going to set it at five. And because it's less than or equal to this time, it's going to be a solid dot filled in. And my X values are anything that is less than or equal to negative five. So this time my arrow goes this way. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, now that is showing me that any value less than 5 satisfies that equation. In order to check the solution, I want to notice here, right, that the end point, that is this point right here, and the direction of the inequality should be checked to verify this solution. So I can go ahead and put in this number five here to check and see if my work is correct. So let's see if I got that right. Five, that's my end point, minus two is less than or equal to three. Is that true? Five minus two is three. Is three less than or equal to three? Yep, the answer is yes. So that checks out. If I want to check one of these numbers here along the line to make just make sure that I got this right, I could pick any number that I, want, that I wanted to that was less than five. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one. Okay. So let's say let's say one is x this time, just to be sure that I'm drawing this arrow in the right direction. Minus two is less than or equal to three. One minus two is negative one. Is that less than or equal to three? Yes. Okay. So my work is correct. Let's go ahead and do letter B. Here we have z minus 2 is greater than or equal to 1 half. Let's move the 2. I'm going to add 2 since this is a negative 2 in order to move it from this side. And I will add 2 to this side and get z is greater than or equal to 2 and a half. <coughs> okay, I'll draw a number line. I'm going to put my 0 right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. Okay, and here's negative one. Two and a half is the place where I want that point. I think I'll go ahead and use my green again. <clears throat> because it has, it includes an equal to, I'm gonna use a solid dot. I'm gonna put it right there at two and a half. Values for Z is anything that includes or is greater than two and a half. So my direction should go this way because these numbers are greater, <coughs> excuse me, than negative, excuse me, than two and a half. To check my work, I'll put two and a half back into the original equation. Two and a half for z minus two is greater than or equal to one half. Two and a half minus two is one half. Is one half greater than or equal to one half? Yes, it is. <coughs> so that checked out. Let's choose four now just to make sure that my arrow is going in the right direction. So I'm going to substitute in four for z. And I get 4 minus 2 is greater than or equal to 1 half. 2 is greater than or equal to 1 half. Is that true? Yes, it is. So my work is correct. <coughs> okay. We're going to do the same thing, the same process here. Remembering that just as we can add the same number to both sides of an equality, or an, an equality or an inequality, which is what we just proved up here, we can also subtract, which is the same as adding a negative number, the same number from each side, and our truth value will remain the same. Let me show you what I mean. Again, this is quite simple. We take x plus 5 is less than 7, 
and we're going to try to just get x by itself so that we can graph this on a number line. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the equation here. x plus 5 is less than 7. I'm going to move the 5 from this side of the equation to this side. Now I subtracted it because it was positive here. So I need it to be negative here in order to remove it from this side and then move it to this side. And I get x is less than 7 minus 5 is 2. I will draw a number line. My zero approximately in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four is enough. Negative one. This is one, two, three, four, and five. Negative two, negative three, negative four. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to go back to my orange pencil. I don't have an equal, a uh, less than or equal to sign, just less than. So that means that when I plot the point at two, it's going to be an open circle not filled in because it can't equal 2 and x needs to be less than 2 so all values that are less than 2 are included in the solution but not equal to 2 which is why I didn't fill in the dot. <coughs> Excuse me. I should be able to do the same thing here. Okay so let's try the number 2. Let's put it back here into this equation. If I've got 2 plus 5 is less than 7. 7 less than 7? No, it's not. And I know that I did that right because I left that dot open. Okay? If, if this was equal to, it would be accurate, which would mean I would need to go back and fill it in. But because 7 is not less than 7, I see here from that open circle that I do not include 2 as one of the possible values for the solution set. Let me test one of the ones that does have a solid line on it. Let's go ahead and try negative 1. Negative 1 plus 5, I'm putting it back into my original equation here, is that less than 7? So negative 1 plus 5 is 4, is less than 7? Yes. So my graph is correct. Let's try solving this inequality. y plus 1.1 is less than or equal to 3.2. This is a positive 1.1, so in order to undo that addition, I'm going to use the inverse operation, which is subtraction, get rid of it here, and move it over here. Because I subtracted it on this side, I also need to subtract it on this side. 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, and I have y needs to be less than or equal to 2.1. All right, number line. I know my values are going to be less than 2.1, so I'm going to put my 0 about right here. Here's 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. I'm going to use a blue pencil and I'm going to plot a point at 2.1. Because it includes the equal sign there, less than or equal to, I'm going to fill in that dot and I'm going to put it right there just beyond the 2. And y values can be equal to 2.1 or anything less than 2.1. So my arrow needs to go this way to show that it includes all values that are less than 2.1. In order to check my work, I'm going to go ahead and put 2.1 in to my original equation and see if it checks out. 2.1 plus 1.1 is greater than or equal to 3.2. 2.1 plus 1.1 is 3.2. Is that less than or equal to 3.2? Yes. Great. So I know I have the right kind of dot there. Okay. Now let's check one of the values. Oh, I don't know. Let's try zero. 0 plus 1.1 that's here in the solid line and see if it checks out is less than or equal to 3.2. So 0 .1 plus 1.1 is just 1.1 and that is indeed less than 3.2 so that checks out. My work so far is uh, coming along here and everything is in line. Now, oh all we have is one more problem guys, the application. Okay, so this is quite a fast lesson. You should have plenty of time uh, today to work on the practice problems, maybe even get a jump on the homework um, or on some corrections, whatever Mrs. Bryden gives you time to do. But we just have one problem left to solve together. And that is about Michael's horse. 
Michael's horse can carry no more. Michael, do you have a horse? I'm sure they didn't have you in mind here when they said Michael, but who knows? If you have a horse, I don't know. Anyway, in any case, Michael's horse can carry no more than 200 pounds on its back. Uh-oh. I'm sure that can carry you, Michael, but I don't know. A full-grown man, if that was my husband, he wouldn't be able to ride that horse. If Michael weighs 168 pounds, how much can his saddle weigh? Okay. So it's not just that the horse can carry a 200-pound man. The horse can't carry more than 200 pounds, period. So whatever is loaded up on that horse cannot exceed 200 pounds, but it can equal 200 pounds, okay? Because it can carry no more than 200 pounds, meaning as long as it is 200 pounds or less, the horse is gonna be okay, all right? So let's give this, uh, let's write an equation here to model this. So we know that Michael weighs 168 pounds. We don't know how much the saddle weighs. But whatever it is, when we add it to 168, it has to be less than or equal to 200, okay? In order to find how much that saddle can weigh, we're going to subtract 168 from this side, okay, because it's positive here, so in order to move it, and subtract it over here from this side. Now, I'm gonna take 200 and subtract 168 and find out that X, that is, the weight of the saddle, has to be less than or equal to 32 pounds. I would graph that by drawing a number line. I don't really have to start at zero. I could, but I don't have to. Um, let's say I start at, I don't know, let's, let's start at 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. and I'm gonna go ahead and take my green pencil to say that 32 and I'm gonna fill that dot in because the saddle can weigh up to 32 pounds but it also can include any saddle that is lighter than 32 pounds all right that is it for lesson 66 so before you go on uh, to the next thing, please go ahead and complete the practice problems. You only have four of them today. A, B, C, and D. And because it's such a short lesson, go ahead and work your way uh, on your dry erase boards with a partner or on your own through all four of those. Make sure you show that to uh, Mrs. Bryden and she can check your work. And then I will see you back on video for lesson 67. But don't forget, please, that your lesson 66 homework is due at our next class period.